Bref, Maria Abdiker, euh, qui était vécue en 17 combats, qu'elle devra réussir ou tenter de réussir son exploit. On parle d'ici d'un combat d'unification de 154 livres entre la numéro 1 et la numéro 2 mondiale chez les poids moyens juniors. L'événement sera présenté en direct via In Demand aux principaux câbleaux distributeurs et aux fournisseurs de signal satellite. So Shields versus the Care is all about Claressa Trailblazer Shields, undefeated in 10 contests, 10 and all, 2 KOs, meeting Mariev Dicker. She's also undefeated, 17 uh, victories, zero defeats in the 10 round main event of Super Women, an historic night of live all female pay per view boxing, celebrating women's sports and dedicated to International Women's Day 2021. That is presented by Salita Promotions in association with Dope Evolution. <coughs> Very interesting fact here. Um, undefeated three division world champion Claressa Shields will attempt to be the first boxer in the four belt era to become undisputed world champion in two weight divisions when she faces unbeaten IBF super welterweight champion Marie F. Dicker in a 154 pound unification bout between an all natural number one against number two junior middleweights in the world. The event will be broadcast live via in demand to the major cable, satellite, and telco outlets, as well as on live streaming platform fight.tv. That's F I T E dot TV at 9 p.m. Eastern time. All of that coming from the Door Financial Center in Flint, Michigan, for the price of just $29.95 US. Avant de poursuivre, je vous demande de me permettre de vous expliquer un peu le déroulement de la conférence d'aujourd'hui. D'abord, je vous le mentionne, on est serré au niveau du temps. J'ai oublié de vous dire aussi que tout ça est enregistré. Vous aurez le lien à la fin de la conférence de presse. Mais si vous voulez enregistrer vous-même l'événement, libre à vous de le faire. Euh, on va vous présenter, je vais vous présenter dans quelques instants nos invités qui vont prendre la parole à tour de rôle. Il va y ensuite y avoir une période de questions des médias et on va conclure après vos questions. So for now, a quick word to explain to you how we'll proceed for this new conference. I forgot to tell you uh, from the get-go that this Zoom conference is recorded. You will all get the link once this conference is over. But if you do want to record yourself the press conference, Go ahead and do so. Feel free to do so. Um, so I'll introduce to you the guests who will each have a word with you in just a few moments. That will be followed by a questions and answer period for the media. And we will conclude once that is over with. We're kind of tight on time, so I'll be short on translating today. Uh, the media protocol to ask a question later on during the news conference is as follows. First, you must click the raise hand uh, button at the bottom of the screen. Then you'll be added to the queue. Our moderator will open your line when it's your turn to speak. And then once you do that, you have to click allow audio to ask your questions so we can hear you. Alors, le protocole média pour poser vos questions un peu plus tard au cours de cette conférence, vous, vous devez d'abord cliquer sur lever la main au bas de votre écran. Vous serez ajouté à la file. Par la suite, notre modérateur va ouvrir votre micro lorsque ce sera à votre tour. Et à ce moment-là, vous devez cliquer sur « Permettre l'audio »,« Allow audio » pour ouvrir votre micro afin de poser votre question. Sans plus tarder, je vous présente donc nos invités. Without further ado, here is our guest panel for this conference. Premièrement, uh, il est le président et chef de direction de Salita Prom Promotions. He is the president and CEO of Salita Promotions, Dimitri Salita. Hello, Dimitri. Thanks for being with us today. Le président et chef de direction de groupe Yvon Michel, Monsieur Yvon Michel. Salutations, Yvon. Merci d'être là. Um, I'm just wondering, has John David Jackson joined us yet? Claria Sears, yeah. Shields trainer. Is John yeah. There? Yes. Okay. Thanks for being with us, John. My pleasure. Uh, you'll have a word with us just in just a few moments. Um, Stéphane Arnois va suivre uh, John David Jackson. Stéphane est l'entraîneur de Marie Abdicar. Marie Abdicar's trainer, Stéphane, will follow John in the order. Uh, we'll, we'll have a few words from uh, our champion, Clarissa Shields, unified WBC and WBO super welterweight champion. Clarissa Shields, champion unifié des super mi-moyens de la WBA et WBO. Et on va clore le tout avec uh, Maria Abdiker, championne des super mi-moyens de la IBF. Final words will be uh, from uh, IBF super welterweight champion, 
Marie-Ève Dicard, and then we'll go with the question and answer period. So, go ahead, Dimitri. Commençons d'abord avec le promoteur de cet événement. Let's kick things off with the beautiful, this beautiful event's promoter. He is a former NABA light welterweight champion, president and CEO of Salita Promotions, the star of David, Mr. Dimitri Salita. Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, I want to thank both camps, uh, Clarissa Shields and her camp, and Marie Dakari and her camp and her promoter. Her team has been extremely wonderful to work with. And this fight has literally been a year in the making. We were supposed to announce this fight around this time a year ago, and then the pandemic struck. And after that, there have been several uh, tentative rescheduled dates and many reasons for Marie to pull out of the fight. But uh, she stuck with it and shows me and shows the boxing public what kind of desire uh, she has for this fight and, 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 and uh, the true champion that she is. This is two undefeated fighters with uh, Clarissa uh, being a world champion and Marie Dakari being a world champion, a real true undisputed uh, championship of the world. Uh, this is also a very significant fight not only will we see two of the best female fighters in the world fighting in the ring, and I feel that this is one of the best female boxing fights of the year, this is also going to be an all-women's pay-per-view. Um, and uh, boxing fans and sports fans supporting this uh, are going to watch a historic event, truly in every sense of the word, uh, and it's going to be incredibly exciting inside the ring. Uh, we're doing this event in Flint, Michigan, and at the Door Center, which is where the fight was originally scheduled to take place. It has capacity of about 5,000 people, but due to COVID restrictions, uh, we're going to have 200 people and tickets just went on sale. So those that want to attend the event, uh, please go on the Federal Door Center website and purchase your tickets. Uh, again, this is going to be a great, great night of boxing available on pay-per-view. Um, and uh, uh, I look forward to seeing all of you there. And I want to thank the press for taking their time to cover this very important event uh, and for giving us uh, uh, continuous support. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Dimitri. Uh, je, je traduis rapidement. Uh, il a parlé d'un combat qui a été reporté à quelques reprises pour diverses raisons, mais de deux boxeuses championnes du monde invaincues. C'est un vrai, de vrai combat de championnat du monde uh, auquel on va assister le 5 mars prochain. Le Dort Center, euh, la capacité de l'amphithéâtre est de 5 000. À cause de la COVID, ça a été réduit à 200 personnes seulement qui vont pouvoir assister. Mais par la télé à la carte, à un prix très raisonnable, les gens vont pouvoir vraiment euh, être témoins de ce combat de championnat. Il a, dit, il a remercié également à la fin les membres des médias. So, thanks, Dimitri, again. Uh, be careful on the road and hopefully you can make it through the storm safely and deliver your FedEx parcels in the back of you. <laughs> uh, show uh, showtime show yesterday and uh, there's a snowstorm so we had to head back and uh, hey. you know, this COVID environment you have to do what you have to do so we we uh, in Montreal and Quebec totally understand what you're we, we totally relate to what you're saying because we, we're kind of used to that thanks so much Dimitri il est euh, le promoteur le plus important de l'histoire du Canada avec la présentation de plus de 200 galas de boxe en carrière comme promoteur on top of being the most important promoter in Canada's history with the staging of more than 200 events uh, during his career. 22 of his fighters have fought in 64 championship bouts. President de Groupe Yvon Michel, James CEO, Monsieur Yvon Michel. Yvon. Merci, Christian. Bonjour tout le monde, membre des médias euh, du Québec. Bienvenue à ce point de presse. Salut Marie, salut Stéphane. Welcome to all. Good afternoon, Mrs. Steele, uh, Clarissa, and uh, Dimitri and all your team. First of all, Dimitri, I wish to thank you very much and to congratulate you for your determination to make this event come through despite all obstacles and difficulties. And I know there was many of them. I want, also, I want to also thank Mark Taffet, who was also deeply involved in every step. You can't imagine today at what point I'm fébrile, enthusiastic and fier a few weeks of this event historic. Christian l'a mentionné, le 5 mars, ça va être mon 65e combat de championnat du monde. Mais malgré tout ça, c'est la première fois qu'on va être impliqué dans un combat où les quatre ceintures vont être à l'enjeu. Et c'est la première fois que 
un de mes athlètes, un de nos athlètes va être impliqué dans un combat de la télé à la carte aux États-Unis. Et pourtant, on en a eu, on, de, tous les boxeurs euh, chez nous ont participé euh, à de grands réseaux, euh, ont on, on livré bataille sur de grands réseaux comme HBO, Showtime, CBS euh, et d'autres, mais c'est la première fois à la télé à la carte aux États-Unis. Donc, ça va vraiment faire l'histoire. Je sais que Marie-Ève ne sera pas la favorite, je le sais. Son adversaire, Clarissa Shield, elle est aussi bonne, aussi brillante que tout ce que vous avez lu ou tout ce que vous avez entendu sur elle. Vous connaissez ces exploits, il n'y a pas besoin de les répéter, mais euh, je vous garantis une chose, que Marie, elle va être prête pour cet événement. Marie, je l'ai vu grandir, je l'ai vu se développer. En fait, de la première fois où je pensais que c'était un homme qui s'entraînait au premier étage euh, du, du bureau où on était. Elle faisait les, les mitaines avec Samuel Descari jusqu'à son ascension pour devenir championne du monde. Ses trois défenses. Je peux vous assurer que Marie-Ève est prête physiquement, mentalement, stratégiquement pour son, ce rendez-vous unique et un rendez-vous qui va définir réellement sa carrière. From the first time I met Marie-Ève I knew she was special. Her charisma, social intelligence, uh, are matched only by her ambitions and relentless determination to always prepare well and wow. become better every day as a boxer and as a person. These are the same threats I noticed when I first met Roy Jones Jr. and got to know him in training camp. The fight against Clarissa Shield and the event on March 5th are going to happen because Marie wanted the challenge because she truly believes in her skills and she is convinced she will prevail. <laughs> All along, she insisted with conviction on doing whatever it took to make this happen despite all the constraints. March 5th will be a great day for the IBF champion, Marie-Ève Ticker. You shouldn't miss it. For, for Marie-Ève, the 5 March, there's no COVID. It's terminé the long months of attente and incertitude. Ça ne fait plus rien, même si on se retrouve à Flynn devant 200 spectateurs chez Shield. On va oublier ces médailles, ces titres. Marie-Ève a un rendez-vous avec l'histoire et je vous promets qu'elle va nous rendre fiers d'elle. Euh, Christian a parlé tantôt de la diffusion à la télé à la carte aux États-Unis, mais au Québec, on va, avoir, on va être distribué, distribué plus que jamais par câble, par Canal Indigo, satellite, par Bell TV et Chat TV, par le numérique. Pour la première fois de leur histoire, Youp va distribuer l'événement de boxe et Fit.tv va faire pour la première fois la distribution en français. Donc, tous ces distributeurs vont le faire en français comme en anglais. Merci beaucoup de votre attention. Thank you very much for your attention. Merci beaucoup, Yvon. Notre prochain invité est l'ex-champion du monde de la WBA et WBO et l'entraîneur de Clarissa Shields. Rolling right along here, our, former, our next guest is former WBA middleweight and WBO junior middleweight champion of the world, And world champion trainer John David Jackson can be with us, could be with us. Take it away, John David. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, I'm looking forward to this event on March the 5th between two very good champions. Um, I, I can't say much about Maria. She, she's, that's bad. She's a good champion and she's coming to fight. Uh, she is in good shape. She came to camp in good shape. We're just fine tuning the last few things that we need for her to be victorious come March 5th. Um, I'm looking forward to it. It's been a while with this crazy COVID thing going on. It'd be nice to see Clarissa back in the ring doing what she does best. And that's uh, beat, beat people up and defend the title. So March 5th should be a wonderful day for both fighters. I mean, it's a great opportunity for Maria to prove herself uh, on, on this scale. And, um, you know, Clarissa's coming to do what she does best, and that's defend her title and remain champion and be the greatest female fighter of all time. So I look forward to it. I want to thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to talk. And we look forward to seeing you on March 5th. John David Jackson, Clarissa Shields, world champion trainer. Thanks for being with us again today, John David. He, uh, our next guest is the man behind uh, the IBF world champion, Marie-Ève Dicker, and her longtime trainer. Il est l'artisan, notre prochain invité. Il est l'artisan et l'entraîneur de la championne du monde IBF, Marie-Ève de Dicker, depuis très longtemps. Ils se connaissent depuis très longtemps. Je laisse la parole sans plus tarder à Stéphane Arnois, qui est l'entraîneur. 
Salut, merci Christian, salut Yvon, salut tout le monde. Merci d'être là pour cette conférence. Puis, tout d'abord, j'aimerais remercier Yvon pour toute sa patience et sa, sa détermination d'avoir fait en sorte que, que notre rêve se réalise à moi et Marie-Ève. Puis, même du côté de Mike Tasset, qui a fait un, un, un travail remarquable avec Dimitri. Puis, je pense qu'on a deux championnes qui. Ils ne veulent, veulent, euh, veulent pas surfer juste d'être à être euh, championne pour euh, affronter seulement que les aspirants numéro 1, numéro 2, numéro 10, peu importe. Ils veulent affronter des championnes. Ils veulent vraiment être reconnus comme championnes euh, unifiées, les deux. Ça, que ça va donner des flamèches. Ça va être un combat historique. Euh, je dirais que même que ça pourrait être le, le combat le plus... Le le plus spectaculaire que tous les, toutes les combats de femmes ensemble, mêlés ensemble. Ça va être incroyable comme combat. Puis, euh, je, sincèrement, avec euh, l'entraînement que Marie-Ève a eu, euh, ça va être difficile pour euh, Clarissa. Je, Clarissa, c'est une athlète incroyable. Euh, comme Yvon disait tantôt, euh, on n'a pas besoin de dire euh, qu'elle a gagné deux fois les, les, la médaille d'or aux Olympiques. Euh, on a deux grandes athlètes. Shield est vraiment tout, tout, tout ce qu'il faut pour. Elle a tout ce qu'il faut pour devenir une, une, une dangereuse boxeuse. Puis c'est ça qui est le fun. Nous, c'est ça qui nous challenge le plus. C'est ça qui nous rêve. On aime les défis. Puis je pense qu'on va avoir droit à un spectacle incroyable. On n'aura jamais vu une Marie Abdicaire aussi en shape. Puis d'ailleurs, on le voit dans dans les photos, comment que la forme physique elle a changé. Euh, tout est vraiment en place pour avoir un combat vraiment spectaculaire et historique parce qu'on va avoir euh, une belle surprise euh, le 5 mars. Merci. Merci beaucoup, Stéphane. Euh, Est-ce que j'ai fait l'erreur encore, Marie-Ève? J'espère que je n'ai pas dit décarré tantôt. Je, je m'en voudrais. <rire> Mais, euh, <rire> in a nutshell, what Stéphane just said, um, He, he knows, uh, he and Mariev know uh, very, very well. Uh, Clarissa is a, an accomplished athlete and, and a tremendous fighter. And they expect her to be at the top of her game come uh, March 5th. But uh, what he was saying is that Mariev has never been in a better physical and mental condition. And that as such, Clarissa is in for a hard night come March 5th with all due respect. Notre prochain invité, vous la voyez déjà, la championne unifiée des super mi-moyens de la WBA et WBO, invaincue en 10 combats, 10 victoires, aucune défaite, 2 KO. She is the only American to win back-to-back -back Olympic gold medals and the most accomplished amateur boxer in U.S. history. She has won nine world titles in three different weight divisions faster than any man or woman ever in history. The undisputed middleweight champion of the world, please welcome Clarissa Trailblazer Shields. Go ahead, Clarissa. Hey, everybody. Um, happy to be here. Um, I want to give a shout out before I get started on my rant. I want to talk, you know, thank my uh, manager, Mark Taffet, for just staying in contact with Marie Eve Care so we can make this great fight happen between two undefeated champions. I want to thank my promoter, uh, Dimitri Salida for, you know, also keeping me encouraged because it was some things that kind of was making me upset about the fights being being uh, postponed and canceled and everything. So just a big just a big shout out to him and a big shout out to Fight TV for putting us on as the main card to be the main event. I'm, uh, I'm super excited uh, uh, about this fight. You know, I think that um, Marie-Yves DeCare, I think that her record speaks for itself, 17-0, zero losses, zero knockouts, me being 10-0 with two knockouts. Uh, supposed to be four, but no need to brag on that. But I will say that um, just to speak on what her coach said or Yvonne, one of them, there's only one Roy Jones. And uh, Marie Eve DeCare, just as great as she is, I don't think you can compare her to Roy Jones. And uh, But up in my case, there is only one greatest woman of all time, and that's me. I respect her skills and everything, but I don't think that Marie Eve DeCare thinks that um, she's going to win this fight. I just don't feel it. It's not like I don't think she's going to come to fight, but she hasn't been promoting the fight. 
I, I haven't heard any trash talk or I haven't heard her say what she's going to do. And uh, that's not a thing of, oh, if you yell or, or, or if you bark too loud that you're scared. But, you know, at the end of the day, we're all fighters. You know, we are fighters. We're not getting in the ring to have a slow dance together. We're getting in there to rumble. So just like her coach said, she's in the best shape of her life and she's in the best mental space. So am I. I've never had to prepare for an, for an opponent for a year. And that's what it's been getting uh, getting prepared. So she's she's on the pictures at my gym everywhere. We watch film of her every day, and uh, I don't like take I don't like take prisoners. So March fifth, I'm not coming to be Marie's best friend. I'm coming to kick her ass, and and I hope that she's ready for that. Thanks, Clarissa. Je traduis rapidement les euh, propos de Clarissa Shields qui se dit extrêmement excitée. Bon, Marie-Ève dit qu'elle dit cette victoire, aucune défaite. Elle, Clarissa, dit victoire, aucune défaite. Pas besoin d'en dire plus, dit-elle. On sait que ça va être un grand combat. Euh, elle a entendu dire qu'il y avait eu des comparaisons entre Marie-Ève et Roy Jones. Elle dit qu'il y a juste un Roy Jones n'en déplaise à Marie-Ève Dicker sans aucun manque de respect. Et euh, elle, a, elle est revenue sur le fait que euh, Stéphane euh, Armand disait tantôt que Marie-Ève et dans, la meilleure, euh, dans le meilleur état physique et euh, mental de sa carrière, ben, elle a dit « Moi aussi, je le suis » et vous allez le voir le soir du 5 mars. Je ne vais pas là pour danser avec elle, pour être une bonne amie. Je m'en vais là pour lui infliger une correction. Je garde des propos polis pour traduire le mieux possible ce que Clarissa Shields vient de nous, euh, de nous dire. Thanks again, Clarissa. Undefeated in, ten, in 17 professional bouts with a perfect record of 17 victories. No defeat. She is the IBF Super Welterweight Champion. Invaincue en 17 combats, 17 victoires, aucune défaite. Elle a relevé et relève tous les défis qu'on lui présente. Je vous prie d'accueillir la championne des super mi-moyens de la IBF, Marie-Ève Dicker. marie -Ève. Merci, Christian. Euh, tout d'abord, merci à tout le monde d'être présent. Euh, comme on l'a mentionné dans, dans, depuis le début de la conférence, ce combat euh, a été euh, rempli de péripéties, rempli de rebondissements. Par contre, tout au long de l'année, vous y avez cru, vous avez été derrière moi. Euh, je parle ici autant de mon promoteur, de mon entraîneur, de mon équipe autour de moi que vous, les médias. Euh, je tiens à vous remercier pour cette année de support-là. Euh, sans aucun doute, cette année-là m'a fait grandir sur tous les sens du terme et m'a permis d'ajouter des outils dans mon sac à outils. Donc, je le vois vraiment comme une opportunité, comme un tremplin pour moi d'avoir utilisé cette année-là, d'avoir pris ce que j'avais en ma possession et de l'avoir tourné en événement positif. C'est ce qu'on a fait. Euh, affronter Clarissa, c'est en quelque sorte l'accomplissement d'une vie pour moi. Quand on est jeune, on rêve de devenir champion, mais quand tu es champion, tu rêves de battre les champions. Euh, dans le cas de Clarissa, on l'a mentionné, son, euh, son pedigree parle par, euh, par lui-même. On n'a pas besoin d'en rajouter. Donc, pour moi, cette opportunité-là, j'aimerais remercier Yvon Michel et j'aimerais remercier l'équipe de Clarissa, Dimitri Salita et John David Jackson qui ont, et pardon, Mark Taffet qui ont permis de, de mettre en branle ce combat-là. On ne se cachera pas. Un combat d'unification, c'est toujours très difficile à organiser. Quand on y, on y ajoute une pandémie mondiale à tout ça, je pense que ça complique un petit peu la donne et, et, et tout. Donc, d'être ici aujourd'hui avec vous, de voir que ce, ce combat-là se matérialise, pour moi, euh, c'est l'opportunité d'une vie, c'est vraiment quelque chose que je suis vraiment contente de vivre. Euh, je suis aussi très heureuse d'avoir eu la chance de rencontrer Clarissa dans toute sa candeur et son humilité aujourd'hui. Euh, <rire> je dois dire que, euh, pour un petit peu euh, corriger ses propos, je pense que le mal a interprété les propos du bon. On ne compare pas à Ray Jones et effectivement, il y a juste un Ray Jones. Euh, par contre, on peut comparer mon, mon charisme et euh, ma vision de la boxe, mon, mon amour pour la boxe à celui de Ray Jones. Euh, donc, pour moi, le 5 mars, euh, c'est vraiment une opportunité en or. Et comme depuis le début de ma carrière, à toutes les fois où il y a une opportunité, euh, j'y vais à bras ouverts, je saute dans cette aventure-là. Je suis devenue championne du monde, on a cherché un nouveau défi, j'ai affronté mon aspirante numéro un, Michaela Lauren. On ne donnait, on donnait pas cher de ma peau dans ce combat-là, j'ai relevé le défi. Donc, plus le défi euh, devant moi est grand, euh, plus moi je performe, plus je carbure à ça. Je sais que je suis... Euh, nettement sous-estimé dans ce combat-là. Je suis un petit peu underdog en quelque sorte. Euh, pour moi, c'est comme si le monde entier me disait « Maria, t'es pas game ». Et ce « t'es pas game-là », vous n'avez pas idée combien de fois dans ma vie ça m'a mis dans le trou parce que j'ai fait des niaiseries à cause de ça, mais le courage que ça me donne, la détermination, le « guts » que ça me donne, 
Euh, c'est un petit peu cette position-là dans laquelle je me trouve et j'adore ça. J'espère vous voir en grand nombre le 5 mars parce que euh, ça va être un moment de ne pas manquer. Um, Christian, you want me to translate it or you, you prefer translating it? Okay, I'll, I'll... Go ahead. There, you're the one we want to hear, not me. Go ahead. Okay, great. I, I, I'm going to try to think my best English. I watch a lot of uh, TV English, uh, English TV, but this is not my first language, so hopefully you'll understand my, uh, my point. Um, this event is huge for me. Um, it's an opportunity that I've always dreamed of. As a kid, you want to become a champion, but when you become a champion, you want to be the champion. Uh, I have a lot of respect for Clarissa's pedigree. I have a lot of respect for her accomplishment, but I know I can challenge her. I know I can be in the same ring as her, and that's what's going to happen on March 5th. So I would like to thank my promoter and Clarissa's team for uh, putting on this event, for making it happen. Doing a unified bout is already complicated. There's a lot of stuff to deal with, but when you had a, Monday, a world pandemic on top of it, it makes it even harder. So uh, for all the year, all the medias, all the, the people around me supported us. They were with us in that adventure. So I'm really happy to uh, share this moment with you that has been following all uh, from the beginning this, uh, I would say this adventure, and I'm looking forward to see you all March 5th. Excellent. Merci infiniment, uh, Marie-Ève. All my translation notes down the drain. And that's just fine. That's, all, that's the way we want it. Um, we have now come to the question and answer period. On est maintenant à la période de, de questions des médias. Je rappelle le protocole. Si vous voulez poser une question, vous cliquez sur « Levez la main au bas de votre écran ». Vous serez ajouté à la file. Notre modérateur ou modératrice, dans ce cas-ci, va ouvrir votre micro lorsque ce sera à votre tour de poser votre question. Et pour poser votre question, vous devez cliquer sur « Permettre l'audio » vous-même au bas de votre écran, de façon à ouvrir votre micro pour pouvoir poser votre question à qui de droit. So again, the media protocol for the question and answer period now is to click the raise hand button at the bottom of the screen. You'll be added to the queue. Our moderator will, again, open your line when, it, when it's your turn to speak. And when it is your turn to speak, please Click allow audio so we can hear you when you ask your question. Uh, um, Est-ce que c'est moi, Claire, qui uh, donne la parole ou c'est toi? Vas-y, Francis Paquin. Hi, my question is for Clarissa. You had the uh, numerous great fights uh, in your career. How do you rank uh, this upcoming one with uh, Marie Evdika? Um, I rank it as, um, I mean, I fought against a few uh, undefeated fighters, so I don't like to um, discredit nobody's, you know, resume or anything like that. I feel like uh, her resume is pretty good. She's fought against a lot of fighters who have winning records. I, don't, I haven't seen where she's fought anybody that was undefeated like I have. Um, also, I fought outside of my uh, hometown plenty of times and out of, you know, just, I was in the U.S., but I wasn't fighting in Flint. I fought in Detroit. I fought in New York. I fought in LA so I've kind of been all like all over the U.S. fighting um I think that Marie Eve care brings a lot to the table she's a southpaw you know um she got some speed and stuff like that um she got certain things that she do when she fights she got a good left hand so I've been watching her and I uh, and I respect her skills but that's why I don't really prepare for any fighter I just um prepare myself You know, it's not really like preparing for her. Like, yeah, we're going to do things that you have to do against the southpaw. But then again, too, um, just want to make myself be faster, stronger, be more attentive, uh, be more slippery and just pick and, and you know, pick my uh, shots and stuff better. So so I think that um, me and her are going to have a really, really good fight in the earlier rounds. But then I think I'll be able to uh, to to actually break her down toward toward the end of the fight. And uh, get the and get the big win. Thank you, Clarice. No problem. Bon, ensuite, euh, j'ai euh, j'ai un message. Euh, tu devrais avoir les mains levées. Tu peux coller les shots. Euh, très bien, Jean-François Chabot, à vous. Hi, Clarissa. Thank you for being with us uh, today. Um, I would like to ask a question that I had a, the chance to ask Mariev uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, boxing has been 
going through uh, a situation like unprecedented uh, that we'd never seen before. And um, I wanted to ask you how you managed with all the on again, off again uh, situation regarding this coming fight. Um, how difficult was it for you? Uh, how did you do it? Um, I can say like it was very difficult, not just with the pandemic, but you know, like the pandemic, everything being closed down, you know, having to be in a house, fight schedules, sketch, you know, fights canceled. Um, it was super frustrating, but um, I just felt like God was setting up, you know, he was canceling things to make things be bigger. You know, I felt like he was, he was set, he had a big, he, he just had a bigger plan. So I guess Showtime main event wasn't, wasn't big enough. And, um, and even fighting, you know, with Dana White wasn't big enough. And I think that God wanted us to have an opportunity to fight on pay-per-view because women boxers need this, you know? So even though I was upset about all the, all the cancellations and everything. I just like to humble myself and uh, just know that God was setting something up for the bigger picture. So this is great for me and Marie to care on all the women on the card, but overall it's just great for women's boxing. And that's my whole cause, you know, women's boxing, equal pay, equal rights, equal opportunity. And uh, we're not the only sport that is going through this and other sports have taken the same lane to where you know, they're fighting on their own. Well, they're playing on their own networks and getting all the revenue from their, uh, from their streaming and from their audience. So um, I think this is a great step for women's boxing. And um, people are going to take after our footsteps after this. But I just continue to just pray, continue training and giving myself breaks when needed so I wouldn't overtrain. But just kind of having that balance. You know, I was at home in my hometown um, I also signed to MMA, so I was I spent time at Albuquerque training for MMA. I spent time at home training for boxing, and then MMA. And um, I spent a whole lot of time with my with my family, which was uh, what I think much needed because just over the years, with me accomplishing everything that I've accomplished, I'm I'm, I'm never at home. I never get to spend time with my family. I, I don't get to celebrate holidays like you know Thanksgiving and Christmas. And this year I was able to celebrate that. So even though I would have loved to be fighting, um, I can't say that I didn't enjoy like the downtime and being able to have, you know, have some time with my family. So it was a few, few things that helped me get through it. But um, basically that, like, that's it. Thank you very much, Clarissa. No problem. All right. Thanks, Clarissa. Merci, Jean-Francois. U.S. Media next. R.L. Woodson. Take it away, R.L. Hey, thanks for your time today. How you doing, Clarissa? I'm fine. How are you? I'm pretty good. Hey, uh, based on when we got the update of uh, where you were in this camp and getting ready, uh, it seems like it's a little shorter than later. Is there anything uh, with coming over from New Mexico? Is there anything from that, the MMA training, that allows you to kind of shorten this camp a little bit? I didn't shorten this camp. I, I gave six weeks to this camp like I do every other fight. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, what was the, what was, I know sometimes we hear eight, 10 weeks. So that's why I thought it might've been a little short, but of course, you know. I've never, I, I've never trained eight to 10 weeks for an opponent. <laughs> that's just not, and I, and I think also too, um, usually I'm, I'm a lot higher in weight when I'm trying to come down. Um, I've been at 168 for the past three, three to four months. So, um, Usually I want. Usually I walk around at one about one eighty five, you know. But I've been uh, been handling my weight a lot better, uh, just eating clean just throughout the whole pandemic and everything, to where I don't have to have those weight problems because I got a big year in twenty twenty one. So I don't want to get that big anymore, and I want to keep my weight at one seventy one, one sixty five ish. So uh, that's why sometimes I may start camp a little earlier, but. Um, the most I, that I've ever had a camp was seven weeks. I've never done eight to 10 weeks for a boxing camp. Okay. Um, yeah. congratulations on this move. Uh, I thought, it, you know, I heard the frustration and everything, but I thought it was dope that a couple, a couple of weeks later, like you solved the problem and, and came out with this pay-per-view. So salute to you on that. Uh, what was the major detail from your business team? Um, you know, that made you comfortable, you know, that let's go ahead and do this. I mean, it's a, it's a huge risk. I, I don't know the certainties of this fight. I know, I know that I'm training to win, but when you talk about pay-per-view buys, 
Um, this is our first pay-per-view showing for women's boxing in 20 years. So this isn't like this is something that we've been doing and we expect to get this many numbers. We don't know what to expect for numbers. I know that they're going to, it's going to be a hell of a fight. That's what I know. And people who love boxing are going to enjoy this fight. And that's kind of what I'm putting my focus on. But um, me and my team just said it's time for us to step out on our faith and take some risk and just show the world that women's boxing is here and that we will not wait on the opportunity to be, to fight against another world champion. We, we're not going to wait on the network to give us the opportunity. We're going to go out there and make a way for ourselves and make the biggest fight and just kind of roll with the punches. And I feel like this is a great fight to do it with and hope. And I, and I think that it's giving other girls in the U S hope that they don't have to wait on, uh, on the networks to give them big fights either and put them on TV. Like they can go off and do it with their own pay-per-view, have a streaming and have all their fans tune in and that will you know predict on how much like how much they get paid because women in boxing don't get paid a lot anyway you know but they give us all these excuses to why but now when we get the pay-per-view numbers like they won't be able to say how much we're worth and how much we're not worth because the numbers will be there to tell them so I'm super excited about all of it and uh, hoping to just grow off this first pay-per-view and have a second third and fourth and just watch the numbers you know grow Thank, thanks, RL. Thanks, Larissa. If if I can, I I saw that I just saw that Dimitri raised his hand. Did you have? Did you want to follow up on this, Dimitri? I do. I want to add to it. Uh, so I just want to say, Clarissa is the first woman in the United States history to ever fight out to, to have a headline in the premium cable network television show. That was in her in her second professional fight. She was a main event on Showtime, and she uh, for the MGM Detroit and also sold that venue out. Only in her second professional fight. Shortly yeah. thereafter other platforms, other networks uh, began to showcase women. And it's been Clarissa's goal. She understands the position that she's in being the first two-time Olympic gold medalist, being as talented as she is. So she has done so many things for the sport of boxing that go beyond her. And this pay-per-view on March 5th is a significant step in that direction. It's not only about her. It's about establishing a name for women's boxing. And you have, so we as a team took an educated guests in this, but Clarissa is the, has been the leader in making sure that this happens. So we have, uh, you know, first of all, Clarissa, when we started working together, instructed me to make the biggest and the best fights. In a fourth professional fight, she fought for the world title against a champion that was 16-0. and 0. She won in, in an incredible fashion. We have a two-time Olympic gold medalist, the unified world champion, uh, fighting uh, an IBF world champion, another undefeated fighter, a fantastic fight, Mark Taffet, former head of HBO pay-per-view, one of the most successful business people in the sport of boxing, doing so much work behind the scenes to make sure that this is, that this, that this event is successful. Uh, so we're guys for who uh, the uh, raise hand uh, function is not working, uh, such as the case for Jason Lewis. We'll get, we'll get to you in just a moment, Jason, but first uh, in the same situation, Daniel Cloutier, ici à Montréal. Daniel. Oui. Uh, bonjour. Uh... La question, à, à, la question est pour Marie-Ève Dicker. Euh, J'aimerais savoir si euh, Marie a vu souvent en action euh, Clary Shields, puis qu'est-ce qu'elle considère comme ses principales qualités puis ses principaux défauts? Euh, C'est sûr que de, de, en action... Live, non, jamais. Par contre, en séance vidéo, euh, on pourrait utiliser l'expression « je la connais par cœur euh, ». Je l'ai mentionné tout à l'heure, ça fait un an qu'on se prépare pour ce combat-là. Donc, ça fait un an qu'on procède à du visionnement des séances vidéo, qu'on est capable de trouver les forces, mais aussi les faiblesses de Clarissa. Euh, si j'avais nommé deux de ses forces, je dirais sa, son explosion et sa vitesse, à quel point elle peut lancer des combinaisons rapidement et à quel point elle peut être intelligente dans un ring. Donc, Euh, ce sont deux choses auxquelles on s'est euh, ardemment préparé là, pour euh, cet affrontement. Là. Merci. Plaisir. All right. Scott Bugzagrin, just a moment before you go to Scott. Uh, John, are you there? John Lewis? Or Jason, sorry, not John. Jason Lewis, go ahead. No problem. Thank you. I have a question for both fighters. I'll start with Clarissa. Clarissa, obviously, you've said over and over again, it was a dream for you to fight in your hometown of Flynn. Now you finally get that opportunity, and I know it's not going to be a packed house like you had hoped, but knowing that there's at least going to be 200 tickets sold, how excited are you to finally get in the ring in front of fans in your hometown? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm 
super excited, you know, to just fight on the Flint, Michigan soil because of what Flint, Michigan is going through. I'll be rocking my blue braids as always to represent the Flint water crisis and let the world know that Flint still doesn't have clean water and it's been almost seven years. So I love being an advocate for my hometown and being able to let the little kids be able to come watch me and see me in person so they know that kids from Flint can be pay-per-view stars. They can be successful. They can be, you know, superstars and superheroes. So I'm, I'm super excited about that. Um, and I'm just excited about like the fight in it, like like in itself. It's like a fight for Flint, of course, and for me to be an advocate for Flint, but then, then just to be the woman taking this huge risk or to be the women taking this huge risk on pay-per-view and then two undefeated champions. Like we're not just fighting, you know, to take each other belts, you know, but I'm fighting to make history. We're fighting to raise women's boxing as a whole, you know, so it's a whole different fight. Like the men get to get inside the ring and fight and look like crap and get another opportunity. Us women, we have to make sure we bring our A game every fight, you know, and, uh, you know, come ready. So um, I'm, I'm super excited to have this big fight up in Flint and just to um, showcase my skills against another undefeated fighter in world champion. You mentioned it before as well. Obviously, you, you said you're going to win this fight, but do you have a prediction on how exactly the fight's going to go? Yeah. I, let me remember what I, what I said. It's pay-per-view live, and she's going down in five. Is that what I said? But I really meant what I said, though. I really do. Like, I've been training super, super hard. And then I think a lot of people are tuning in, tuning in into this fight and saying, oh, you know, Shields has two knockouts. You know, she don't have punching power, which is a myth. And I think that people to even uh, judge Marie Eve the care, you know, saying her 17 and no with zero losses zero, and zero knockouts to say that she doesn't have punching power is also a myth. Uh, from me watching her fight, she does have, uh, have, uh, have punching power. So as I'm going for the KO, I'm going to also have to, make, have to make sure that um, I don't get caught by her, too. So I'm super excited about this fight. And um, I think that the more fight that she brings, the more fight I'm going to bring. But I believe that I possess the skills, that I possess the power, and that I'll have enough motivation to break her will and get her out the ring fifth round. I don't know if she will agree with that or not, but that's what I feel in my heart. Thank you, Chris. So, and Maria. Do you agree with that or not, Maria? <laughs> uh, if I agree with that, well, it's good to have faith. It's good to have uh, to have to be believing in yourself. So good for you, Clarissa. Uh, on on my opinion, I don't think the fight's going to go this way. Uh, March first will tell. But what I could say is my preparation is at its best, and I'm going to give the best fight I ever gave in my career. Um, the bigger the challenge is, the better I react. The better the, the better version shows of me shows up. So having this opportunity, like Clarissa said, uh, this is one thing I agree with you, Clarissa. Um, it's taking women boxing to another level to be the first one to be uh, a pay-per-view event. The first women to be a pay-per-view event in the US is finally coming down. This is great. Here in Quebec, we had the opportunity to do it many times. I think I did it two or three times. So I'm glad to be part of that in the U.S. And since the, the beginning of my career, I've always said uh, boxing is my passion. Boxing is my sport. But to me, boxing is more than that. I want to achieve great things to inspire people to dream big. And I think that this is the kind of fight that will make you make me do it. Merci, marie -Ève. And by the way, Clarissa, you alluded to uh, excitement just a moment ago. By this time, I don't think any of us and I can I think I can speak of her for everyone. None of us are not excited about this by this time. Up next, uh, Scotty Bookziger. Go ahead and take it away, Scott. Scotty, still there? Turn your mic on, Scott. We can't hear you. Turn your mic on. No, you're still muted. <laughs> Double click if you have. Oh, you're unmuted now. Go ahead. Nope, can't hear him. I can't hear him. No, well, try and fix it your way, Scott, and uh, we'll get back to you in just a moment. Um, while Scott works on his technical problems, who should we go to? Jonathan Nagioff, do I pronounce it correctly? Yep. Go ahead, John. Hey, um, Marissa, John here from Pro Boxing Fans. Um, how would 
I saw actually you were uh, picture with Evander Holyfield um, the other day. I just want to know, uh, did he give you any advice heading into this? And what would it mean to you to win this compared to when you became undisputed middleweight champion? Oh, um, when I went to see Evander, of course, of course, I asked him, you know, he's the last boxer to be undisputed in two different weight classes in the female era. It's only him. He's a lone soldier when it like when it comes to being undisputed up in two different weight classes. So I had to ask him, you know, what's the secret? And uh, he gave it to me. And he just, you know, um, he's a huge fan of me. He watches me box. I, I'd be grateful if he would be coming to the fight. I think it's a very chance that I think it's a great chance that uh he'll be coming to Flint um to watch the fight um but just having the talk of just how hard to train how to focus how not to let all the pressure get to me because it is a lot of pressure being a woman fighter and uh fighting pay-per-view and the numbers and just the training and the performing it is a lot of pressure but he had told me he said I never stoop down to people's level and always stay on your level and uh, I'm not gonna give the gist of that of that convo, but it was more of everybody tries to say or people try to criticize me on my when I first started boxing when I was knocking girls out when I turned pro they was they were saying Clarissa Shields is all power. I switched it up and started boxing girls' shoes off and getting unanimous decisions. And now it's Clarissa she only has boxing skills she doesn't have any power. And uh, he had just to let me know like. In your fight, you display power, you display skill, you display a very high IQ and never stoop down to people's level to where you go in there and just looking like an average fighter trying to get a knockout. So he just assured me that, you know, you do have punching power and you're going to do great this fight. And don't really worry about the knockout. Just go out there and overperform like you do every fight. And that was his advice to me. So I'm grateful for that. I met Evander Holyfield when I was 16 years old. I'm 25 now. So uh been a been a great relationship pat uh, in the uh, in the past nine years um and then you asked me something else what you ask toward the end yeah uh how would it compare winning this to, to when you became undisputed middleweight champion you know what I, I i really wouldn't be able to uh to explain that after i beat christina hammer i don't know why they painted her out to be um this big bad monster or whatever and she wasn't I believe that her and Marie Eve DeCare have a lot of things in common as Marie Eve DeCare has never fought outside of Canada. And before I had fought against Christina Hammer, she only had fought outside of Germany one time. And that's when she fought on my undercard to lead up to our fight. So um, I think that Marie Eve DeCare um, is a bit more, uh, more courageous than Christina Hammer and may even uh, hold better punching power than Christina Hammer. But I think they both have a lot in uh, common in that um, in that they both bring a lot of skill to the fight. But I won't know which one feels better till after. I know that winning my second Olympic gold medal definitely felt better than winning the first one. But that was because I was 17 during the first one and I couldn't do nothing after. But I was 21 and I won the second one. So I was able to go out and party. So <laughs> it, 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 it really just depends. <laughs> Thanks, Jonathan. Thanks, I'll just Clarissa. I'll to ask Marie one question. No, oh, go ahead. Is that right? Yeah. Um, hey, Marie. Um, hey. I just wondered, Clarissa is considered arguably pound for pound one in the world. I just wondered, have you seen any flaws in her game? What What makes you think that you can become the first woman to defeat her? Uh, the fact that she's pound for pound is the reason we accepted this fight. Because like I said, growing up, you are, I wanted to be the champion. But being a champion, I wanted to beat the champion. So this is one of the main reasons we accepted this fight because we know uh, what Clarissa achieved and this is why uh, the challenge is big. This is why we go into this adventure uh, because I'm just having fun when it's hard. I like to hustle, I like to work hard. Um, I think like Clarissa knows, my skills gonna make a huge difference in the fight and pretty much this is what we're gonna be focusing on. Thanks, Jonathan. Can we go back uh, just a moment to Scotty and see if he's resolved his uh, audio issues? Are you there, Scott? Scotty Booksteiger? I can see you. We can't hear you, Scott. Sorry, we do. You know what, Scott? Are you there? Maybe write it in the chat. And That's then what I was going to say. Just send me a, um, 
send me a message in the chat room, Scott, and I'll uh, read it out loud to uh, either Clarissa or Mary Ave if you want a question. So uh, up next, who are we going to? Uh, we have Jeffrey, I believe. Uh, let me just, uh, Jeff Jeffries. Go ahead, Jeff. Is there anybody hearing me? I can hear you. All right, my question is for uh, Clarissa Shield. First of all, how are you doing? I'm doing good, how are you? Doing good, thank you. Uh, I know that during your training camp that you had some time to uh, do sparring with Ollie Holmes, who is also a great uh, female uh, boxer, that, uh, like you already know. How much did you learn from her? In boxing or MMA, which one? Well, both, why not? Well, you learn something from everybody. Me and, me and Holly Holmes did kickboxing and sparring together. So that considered with punches and punches and kicks. Um, it was more of me just learning like the distance of everything that goes into MMA, but we haven't done our boxing sparring yet because she can't, uh, she hasn't had the time to come down here to camp, but I spar later on today at five um, against, against some guys, but um, she was great to learn from. I mean, she kicks high as hell and she's super flexible and she's the only boxer to go over from boxing and MMA actually be successful. So I'm hoping that, you know, down the line that I can be, that I can do the same as she did. Uh, I, I just want to be boxing champion at the same time when I become MMA champion to do it at the same time. All right. And you you face uh, professionally only one softball, uh, Sydney LeBlanc, uh, during uh, the early days of your pre career. How much did the, the DKR softball is a concern to you? It's not a concern. I'm a two-time Olympic gold medalist, and I've traveled the world, and I've been I've been on top of the world plenty of times. I fought against plenty of southpaws in the amateurs. I fought against them in the world championships. I fought against them in the Olympics, and um, it's it's just it just it just it just a switch, you know. Like I can fight southpaw if I wanted to, um, but I but I'm better orthodox, so I would just say, uh, you know, I think that she. Just like any southpaw, she possessed some tricks and she got some different kind of movements that she can do. And she may be awkward at some time and some points, but it's still a fight. And body shots hurt, head shots hurt, and you can be as slick as you want to be, but you're going to get hit with shots. And it's all about how you take those shots and if you can still stick to your game plan. So I'm super excited about fighting somebody as skilled as her and having her be a southpaw. And uh, for people to think that I don't know how to fight a southpaw, it's just beyond me. But, um, I, but I look forward to it. I hope she knows how to fight an orthodox fighter because we're also awkward to them, just as they're awkward to us. Thank you very much, Carissa. Thanks, uh, Jeff. Dernière question, last question, ladies. Um, uh, we're, it's about 2 p.m. Eastern time, so we'll close it out with the last question. Uh, Frédéric Daigle, à vous la parole, Frédéric. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. The question, the first question, I have a question for both of you. The first question is for Clarissa. Do you see this fight as a any challenge at all or only a stepping stone where for, for, for what's coming next for you? I would never overlook an opponent that way. I, I, I really want Marie Eve to care. I hope that she's trained harder for this fight than she has any other fighter because I've watched all her fights and none of the girls that she's fought against has been anywhere near the level of me. I'm a different kind of female athlete, I'm a different kind of animal when it like comes to boxing. So I hope that she's not taking me lightly and that she's not feeling that because she's 17 and knowing she has more fights and more experience that I'm not somebody to be taken seriously. So I, I believe that uh, she'll come to the fight and show you guys that, show you guys things that she hasn't shown before. I think she's gonna pull some tricks out of her bag. You know, she's gonna come and try to shock the world against me. So I'm not taking her lightly at all. You know, but me being who I am, I don't believe that I can be beat by another female fighter. And, it, and it's not just about me believing that. I I work hard. It's not just about me being a trash talker. Like, I work extremely hard to be where I am, to be a three-time division world champion and fought against all the girls at these weight class that was ranked number one. I didn't fight against the number twos or threes. I took out the number one seeds. And that's what I've been doing my whole career. So she's the other number one seed at the 154 division. And I have to do my job. So I'm not going to take her lightly. I'm, I'm going to go out there and fight her as hard as I fought everybody else. So, um, and even harder because it's pay-per-view and it's the big step for women's boxing. So it's going to be a great fight. It's going to be a great fight. I'm not overlooking her. I think she's a great opponent for this event. Um, 
if you win that fourth belt, are you moving up or are you defending the four belts a, a, a bit much? Um, I don't know. Like, I can fight at 54, I can fight at 160, I can fight at 168, and I can fight at 175. Um, we we really just um, not really looking. I'm not looking past the fight for right now. So I don't know what we're going to do after after the victory. We just have to talk and see what happens. But I'm not um, I don't know I, if, if it was up to me, I would hold all my belts and make all the girls who want them have to fight me to get them. I don't like having to vacate belts. Doesn't it make, doesn't make me feel good. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Hey, Maria. Uh... Vous en avez parlé les deux un peu en, en anglais. J'aimerais t'entendre en français sur l'importance pour la boxe féminine de cet événement-là euh, à la télévision, à la carte, aux États-Unis particulièrement. Mais je pense que c'est vraiment une, une grande porte d'entrée. Puis, euh, comme je l'ai mentionné un petit peu tout à l'heure en anglais, nous ici, on a eu euh, le courage de le faire au Québec. En fait, je dis nous, je dis Yvon Michel a eu le courage de, de vendre ce, ce, cet événement-là à la carte. Et euh, les distributeurs ici ont, euh, ont adhéré à tout ça aux États-Unis. Euh, c'est peut-être un petit peu derrière dans le sens où ils nous suivent dans, dans cette optique-là. Je pense que, euh, par contre, au niveau de la visibilité, au, au nombre de, de, de gens qu'on va pouvoir aller toucher, on ne se le cachera pas, les États-Unis, mais partout à travers le monde, c'est euh, un grand pourcentage de la population. C'est beaucoup de, de gens qui peuvent être touchés dans leur foyer. Et euh, c'est beaucoup plus qu'ici au Québec et au Canada. Donc, d'avoir la chance euh, de faire partie de cet événement-là, c'est vraiment quelque chose qui me, qui me fait chaud au cœur. C'est vraiment un, un défi. Euh, sur lequel je suis, je suis contente d'être impliquée. Puis, euh, je pense que je dirais que ça ajoute justement à l'événement parce que, comme je le disais tout à l'heure, euh, moi, je veux inspirer les gens, je veux ouvrir les portes, je veux euh, briser les, 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 les barrières et les tabous. Puis, c'est vraiment une excellente opportunité pour moi de le faire avec cette visibilité-là. Là. Merci beaucoup. Plaisir. Uh, well, one final question, and it's a written one coming us from uh, Scott Bugsiger, who obviously, in unfortunately could not resolve his uh, audio issues. And the question is for Clarissa, uh, Scott Bugsiger says, I'm curious to know how MMA has helped her, uh, has helped with her boxing. Have you seen in, in your timing, hand eye coordination, etc.? And how has boxing helped you in MMA? From Scott. Um, well, boxing is one of the biggest disciplines in MMA. You have boxing, wrestling, jiu-jitsu, and then kickboxing. So they all kind of equal each other out and depends on what you can do best on how it all works together. But I don't think that MMA could help me for, for this fight. This is a boxing match. Um, there is no kicking, elbowing, kneeing, or nothing like that. So not it's not much that I can use with those skills. But um, I was able to stay in shape and to add more to my shape by doing it, doing the MMA training. But I like to keep both of them separate. You know, this is boxing, this is MMA. And I keep a thick line between the two because um, that's just how it works best for me. I don't like to think about MMA training while I'm boxing or think about boxing while I'm MMA training. You know, it's just two different. It's like apples and oranges. It's just two different things. All right, thanks, Clarissa. Uh, ladies, Clarissa, marie thanks so much to both of you for your generosity and time and, and uh, not selfish. So we, re we really appreciate the exercise today and best of luck to both of you who come uh, March 5th. I mean, this promise, one thanks. for the ages, but world's number one and world's number two. It, it can't get better than that. Best, best luck to both of you. Thanks again for your time. No thanks problem. to everyone who was there today. Bon Michel, John David Jackson, Stéphane, Clarissa, marie again, from the bottom of our heart, thanks so much. Uh, once again, Shields versus Decair and her historic, her historic night. Review a presentation of Solita Promotions in association with Jim. En français, c'est présenté à Indigo, Shot TV, Bell. Les applications numériques, ils vont en acheter sur Fight TV, F I T E dot T. So, enjoy $29.95 US. It's a deal for uh, all kinds of action. Uh, thanks to all the promoters and everyone, all the reporters, media people for being with us today, and best of luck for the rest. Thank you. Thanks. Merci. Merci. Thanks again. Bye.